stories from the bush larder is more about the journey than the destination. Because Kenya has never been renowned for this incredible food. But what we do have here is amazing ingredients, colorful, vibrant people, and an absolutely stunning country. And we want to bring all of them together and take you on a journey. And I believe by the end of this, you will be as passionate and as stimulated as I am about this country and all it has to offer. <laughs> I was born in Kenya uh, in 1976. My family definitely is a fusion of cultures. My father is an Indian. My mother is half Irish, half English. The influence of the various cultures in my life has, has had a huge impact on my food. I mean, my grandmother was an incredible cook and that's just filtered down through our family and passed on and passed on. So I've always been around food and since I can remember, I've been cooking. We have incredible ingredients in this country. We're on the spice route with all of the best spices you could ever wish to have. We have the climate to grow the best vegetables, herbs, fruit. We have very, very good meat because we have the pastures to rear it. And we have incredible fish. We're sitting on the Indian Ocean here. It's a massive larder of food. Today we're cooking a Swahili prawn dish with Indian inspiration and a spicy flatbread that uses a unique natural raising agent. We're going to meet a fisherman who still uses hand trawl net to catch his prawns and a farmer who will tap the palm wine, which is the natural raising agent for our flatbreads. Alright, so this is Mohammed. He's a, a prawn fisherman down here. He goes, goes down to the estuary and catches prawns every day. Mohammed, when are you going to come to the estuary? I'm going to come during night time, yende usiku. Kama unakata, una, unakula hiki, kamata, unakula hizi vitu. Yategemea kama nimepata kwa wingi, uh -huh. kama kilo kumi hivi. Uh -huh. Naza kata kilo moja na nusu, uh -huh. alafu yengine ni kauza. I'm going down to the estuary here in Tiwi, where he does it. And he's just told me that generally it doesn't depend, it isn't, there isn't a time of day as per se when he goes to catch his prawns. It just depends on when he, uh, when the tide is going. And as the tide is going out, it's generally better. So, I think the tide should just, say imagine a, so right now the tide is going out, so it's a good time to go and catch some prawns. These are sort of estuary prawns, um, perfect for what, what we need them for. Good size, uh, extremely tasty and fresh. To get fresh prawns these days is not an easy thing. I think 90% of the prawns you eat are frozen. Um, so yeah, looking forward to this. Okay. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to trawl that net all the way up the bank of the river here till we get to that guy with the boat and pretty much get out there and hopefully we will have caught some prawns. Fiddler crab. <laughs> to trawl for these prawns what these guys do is they'll take this net one on each end they'll go down into the water and they have the net attached to their foot at one end and around their wrist at the other and they hold it just above the level of the water and obviously their foot is right down at the bottom so you've pretty much got the entire depth of the water covered and then they just walk it up the estuary and then when they come to the end of the distance they want to cover they just come together in an arc and drag the net back up onto the beach and see how many prawns they've got if they've got enough well and good if not they just go up and down up and down until they get what they need <laughs> I tell you what it's a lot harder work than it looks because I've got a rope wrapped around the bottom of my foot to keep the net to the floor I guess That's that. and it is extremely sore on you gonna have a sure. something like a come 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 that's on the front of you Bring the two ends together. But you get to cook on the ground because I'm. Oh, I told you. Okay, sorry. Just take that thing off my foot. And let's hope we've caught something. Got a couple, well, a few, as you can see from down here. Not a bad size and, you know, fresh as you like. Delicious. Awesome. They're completely wild estuarine tiger prawns and they don't get too big, they're succulent and they are absolutely delicious to die for. So this is Matella, he's a, he pretty much harvests the Mnazi on a daily basis and then sells it. Mnazi is actually a drink, it's an alcoholic beverage, it's free alcohol on tap. What we're going to do with it is actually make a bread. Sasa, when I chukua, asubui, alafu unafanya kitu gani, naka kachupa, alafu naka kajua ama? Aa, hii, ya usubui, wana changa na hile ya jana jioni. Kwa sabu kifika kama asa kumi, wagema, naeka ya lala, alafu hii usubui, uwa wachanganyia, kichanganyia duba watu, anaweza kutumia. Oh, kwa sababu hiko kali sana? Eee, eee. Ah, okay. Sasa, sapa, wana noa hii kisu, ipate makali kidogo. Okay. He's cut little notches to help him. 
hii kazi unafanya kila siku eh eh kabisa hakuna alkamba unatumia kusaidia wewe ama ah uh-uh. hizi <laughs> ngazi ndio zatosha what they do is they'll climb up this tree here tap the plant and as soon as the sap hits the sunlight it begins to ferment and turns into quite a potent alcohol what we're going to do with it is actually make a bread and we use the mnazi or the palm sap as a raising agent as we say in swahili a kibui full of the stuff it's almost yeasty smelling very very uh, fermented and that will turn into a potent alcohol So now what we have to do is we actually have to get some of him. They sell this. It's a little distillery here. It's a little brewery. Brilliant. Let's get a get a bottle of this stuff. Okay, let's give it a go. Ini ya leo ama ya asubuhi. Sio kali sana. Okay. So we'll, this is this morning stuff. If you use the stuff that's too alcoholic, the taste is far too strong for for the bread. So we want we want the morning stuff, not the stuff that's fermented already. And we need to get that into a fridge as quickly as possible so that it doesn't ferment anymore. Okay, we've just come to the main sort of market in the middle of Mombasa city. This is Mombasa town. Um the old town is just behind us here. This is kind of a new development of the city and this is a market it's been here for years. I'm going to pick up a few fresh vegetables uh, which you would find anywhere but mainly is some coconut oil hopefully here and some of the spices they do that mainly come from Lamu that are freshly pounded hand pounded really really good great flavor great sort of aroma and we'll pick some of those up here just pick the whole dishes that we're going to do up really nicely. Mombasa market is one of the oldest markets in the area and it's definitely the biggest. What I love about this place is you can come and find anything you need from spices, fish, vegetables, grains, pulses, lentils, it's all in here and it's all hand picked in sacks. Very very fragrant place and just really really good good ingredients. Here we are. Hi Mohammed. Salam. So, so, how are you? Fine, fine. This is Mohammed. Yes. Come and get come and get a lot of stuff off him quite regularly. What's this, Mohammed? Pounded cardamom. Yes. That's dried pounded tomatoes. This um, is black help. pepper. Vanilla vanilla bean from either Uganda or Madagascar. They grow them in this. Look at the size of that. Awesome. Me nataka dania, eh? Kama bunch mbili. He mafuta nazi kama mbili tu. So basically, it's just coconut oil. What they do is they dry the coconut pulp and they put it through a a squeezing machine and how to get this coconut oil. You need an ajira. How many need? Need me. Curry, curry. Ah, I need about 200 grams of that. Yeah. This is turmeric here. I'm going to take some of that. Garam masala. Garam masala. And garam masala. About 200 grams of that. Okay. Okay, so we got we got the guys down from this morning to come and sample some of the food we're going to make today. The prawns we're going to do very simply in a Indian inspired pan fried masala and then we're going to make a, a flat bread that is deep fried um from the mnazi that we took this morning and then we got the guys down to give us their opinion on the whole thing. So we're going to start off by making the the, the bread or as I known fulkas uh, a recipe of my grandmother from back in the day. The main ingredient really that makes it different from other things is the the mnazi which we took this morning sort of a few hours in the sun you can see it's really frothing up there and that acts like a yeast or a raising agent if you can't get mnazi it might be difficult to get a fella to climb a coconut palm for you what i would suggest is use a yeast and add a bit of coconut milk add 2 teaspoons of cumin to about 4 cups of flour and then half a teaspoon of turmeric and half a teaspoon of chili powder to this add a handful of roughly chopped coriander stalks and all and then add the mnazi which is both your raising agent and your liquid and then knead this thoroughly and leave it to prove for about 4 hours this is what it will look like after that time so if you got a comparison that will basically turn into that you can see the texture of this is much lighter much softer just knock the air out of it again very simply roll them out and fry them in hot oil and then let them puff up till they're nice and golden brown onto the marinade for the prawns is very very simple what what i've got here is just pureed ginger garlic and onion and they're on a sort of a one to one ratio so you got a, an onion a whole bulb of garlic and a whole a big bulb of ginger peeled and pureed so you want a load of that in to that add some freshly chopped chili half a teaspoon of turmeric a whole bunch of fresh coriander chopped up a teaspoon of chili powder 2 teaspoons of dana jira which is roasted coriander and roasted cumin pounded in about a 2 to 1 ratio half a teaspoon of cumin seeds and a nice big fresh squeeze of lime this is a little bit thick this paste so i'm going to loosen it with a little bit of oil 
because when we cook this dish, we don't actually add any oil to the pan. Finally, drop of coconut oil, too much and it is a laxative, but if you just put a little bit, <laughs> enough in there, it gives it a lovely, lovely deep flavor. Finally, throw your prawns in. And give them a good mix. Coat them nicely in all the marinade. Um, and leave them to rest for at least an hour in the fridge. The longer you can do it, the better. The flavor gets into them and they'll just be a bit, bit, you know, a bit nicer. This is a plow disc that's been converted into a cooking wok. Excellent for open fires. The reason is it holds its heat very, very well. Caramelized ginger, garlic, coriander, and the prawns crisp up very, very well. flash fried, it's coated in the marinade really nicely, the oil sort of burned off, you've got a really nice crispy um, sort of rich sauce that's coated the prawns, will be absolutely delicious with those forecasts. So we'll plate it up, and let the guys have a taste and see what they think. My father always used to tell me that food tastes better when you eat with your hands, and when eating Indian food at home, especially if we had guests, he'd make a point of not having any cutlery on the table. And one thing I love, love, love yeah. about this dish is the fact that you, you have to eat it with your hands. Straight away, it's just a tactile, get involved dish. Kuja, kuja, kuja. Nachunga, chunga. Kuna Very good. Nakamba? Food is universal. It's a language that everybody speaks, and it really does bring people together. Whether it's families, whether it's friends, whether it's cultures. Sitting on a beach with your mates, having a dish like this does not get better. Thank you.